The 1991 Gulf War showed that flying high was the best way to fight post-Cold War adversaries. Operation Desert Storm also showed the Air Force that it needed more than just laser guidance alone, as bad weather or sand and dust storms could foil laser designators. The new inertial guidance weapon was chosen as an acquisition reform pilot program, giving it flexibility and independence. The program that eventually became JDAM was rushed into development and production. The Joint Direct Attack Munition is a combination of dumb bomb and a set of add-ons, a low-cost guidance kit that converts free-falling bombs into guided weapons. The kit's major parts are a tail section, which contains an inertial navigation system and global positioning system equipment, and body strikes that provide extra stability and lift. Of the approximately 250,000 munitions dropped by U.S. aircraft in the first Gulf War, some 210,000 were dumb iron bombs. The lack of accuracy of these unguided gravity bombs proved a problem. In the first two weeks of fighting, results fell far below projected rates, in part because of poor weather but also because of poor aim. Laser-guided weapons were far more effective. They accounted for 75% of the destruction wrought by U.S. attacks. But laser-guided bombs were expensive and could be used only in good weather. Not all U.S. airplanes could carry them. Smart Weapons The preeminent smart bomb technology of the day is Boeing's JDAM, which stands for Joint Direct Attack Munition. The basic idea behind the JDAM program is to outfit existing dumb bombs with sophisticated rear guidance sections. The U.S. Air Force is currently using JDAM with the 2,000-pound, 907-kilograms, Blue 109 or negative 84 Malawian Quatches warhead or the 1,000-pound, 454 kilograms, Blue 110 or negative 83 Malawian Quatches warhead. The JDAM tail kit includes adjustable tail fins, a control computer, an inertial guidance system, and a GPS receiver. Both the GPS receiver and the inertial guidance system allow the bomb to locate itself in space. The GPS receiver figures out its position by interpreting GPS satellite signals, while the inertial guidance system monitors the bomb's movements, tracking its path from its launch position. Before dropping the bomb, the aircraft uses its own GPS receiver to pinpoint particular targets on the ground, just before releasing the bomb. The aircraft's computer feeds the bomb's computer its current position and the GPS coordinates of the target. In the air, the dam's GPS receiver processes signals from GPS satellites to keep track of its own position. As with other smart bombs, the control system adjusts the flight fins to steer the bomb in the right direction. According to the U.S. Air Force, the system is accurate to within 40 feet, 13 meters. When everything goes exactly right, the bombs generally hit within a few feet of their targets. This system works fine even in bad weather, because the JDAM gets all its information from satellite signals, which aren't blocked by cloud cover or obstacles. The bomb doesn't have to see anything at all to find its way to the target, and at around $20,000 per tail kit, which can be added to an existing warhead, it's much more economical than $120,000 laser-guided bombs. Development In 1991, when Air Force leaders reviewed its performance following Operation Desert Storm, they saw an operational need for a precision-guided weapon that could be used in any weather. The United States used mostly unguided munitions during the first conflict with Iraq. These weapons were not very accurate, which caused a variety of problems. The Air Force did use some laser-guided weapons, but they were only effective in near-perfect weather and were very expensive. Fortunately, some researchers and engineers at Eglin had already been looking at a new way to guide a bomb to its target since the 1980s. After the service's review of the conflict and its subsequent findings, the technology was ready to be taken off the shelf. Many issues still had to be overcome even though the Air Force was ready to move forward with the project. The most important factor was affordability. The service did not want to pay a lot for this new weapon technology. Luckily for the new program office, acquisition reform was taking place inside the Department of Defense. JDAM was picked by Congress to be one of seven pilot programs given waivers that allowed them to avoid some government regulations that were often very costly. 
In 1995, McDonnell Douglas, which later merged with Boeing, was picked to develop the low-cost JDAM. The Air Force and Navy were on board to purchase 87,000 tail kits at just $18,000 apiece, which has since increased to more than 200,000 units because of the weapon's affordable price and operational success. Combat Proven the B-52 and F-A-18 were to be the first airplanes to carry dams, but Pentagon officials decided that the B-2, then going through operational tests to develop non-nuclear capabilities, would be the best choice. The B-2 stealth bomber, based at Whiteman, was designed to deliver nuclear weapons against heavily defended targets in the Soviet Union, and it needed a non-nuclear weapons enhancement. At Whiteman, 2,000-pound dams were loaded into the stealth bombers, 16 at a time. Then the B-2s flew combat missions to Kosovo and back, a 30-hour round trip. These missions destroyed high-value targets such as an oil refinery wedged in among civilian buildings, but dams were used in other ways as well, ways that the program office had not anticipated. One mission took out the Zezeljev Bridge, which spanned the Danube River at Novi Sad. After action reports showed that 98% of the 652 dams used in the campaign hit their targets. Accuracy can't make up for bad intelligence data. During OAF, B-2s severely damaged the Chinese embassy in Belgrade, hitting it with five dams. The bombs had been steered to coordinates that mission planners mistakenly thought located in arms agency. Still, dams proved so useful that they were rapidly used up. During the Balkan Air War, they used almost the whole first lot, said Serato. Upgrades Experience during Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom led U.S. air power planners to seek additional capabilities in one package, resulting in ongoing program upgrades to place a precision terminal guidance seeker in the JDAM kit. The laser JDAM as this upgrade is known. Add the laser seeker to the nose of a JDAM equipped bomb, giving the ability to engage moving targets to the JDAM. The Laser Seeker is a cooperative development between Boeing's Defense, Space and Security Unit and Israel's Elbit Systems. On June 11, 2007, Boeing announced that it had been awarded a $28 million contract by the U.S. Air Force to deliver 600 Laser Seekers, 400 to the Air Force and 200 to the Navy by June 2009, according to the Boeing Corporation. In tests at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, Air Force F-16 Fighting Falcons and F-15E Strike Eagles dropped 12 500 pounds, 227 kilograms, large dams that successfully struck high-speed moving targets. Using onboard targeting equipment, the launch aircraft self-designated and self-guided their bombs to impact on the targets.